Well, I hope that lesson is a reminder that history is written by the winners. Apparently it's taught by the losers. What's that? Nothing. In fact, the Bible itself is an example of that. In 320 CE, the Roman Emperor Constantine called a meeting and basically picked which books of the Bible were in and which ones were out. Yes, Danny. Talking about the Council of Nicaea? Yes. It was 325 AD. Good catch. And I assume you're reading Dan Brown novels again? What? Nothing. But the Council of Nicaea was how to rightly interpret the already agreed upon scripture. Already agreed upon? Yeah, the Christian church, which was illegal and violently persecuted for its first 280 years, already had widespread agreement on which books belonged in their canon. Before Nicaea? Way before. Examples, please. Ever heard of the Moratorian Canon? Also known as the Moratorian Fragment? Yep, a document that most scholars date to around 180 AD, containing a list of 22 of the 27 books in the New Testament, all four Gospels, Acts, all 13 of Paul's letters, and more. Impressive, but why not all 27? Well, as books were written, on papyrus, and then shared among all the churches in the world, it took time to get unanimous agreement. But the church knew their core documents at least 145 years before a council of bishops got together. But you still haven't explained why those books and not others. The books recognized by the early church were either written by an apostle like Matthew, John, Peter, Paul, or one of their close associates like Mark or Luke. Plus, Christians just believe that the internal qualities of the books themselves are on another level. I mean, the Word of God is living and active. You should read it for yourself sometime. Five-page paper defending your position on canon formation and detention for assuming I've never read the Bible. 